Welcome back everyone to the seventh episode of my journey into making comics. In this episode we are going to be exploring the production phase and finally because this is where the actual page gets drawn. So from the beginning all the way from penciling to inking to flatting then coloring and then some final adjustments at the end so that we can finally have a finished page. This is what making comics is all about. Once you get your writing done this is the next step. So uh, we are going to do this through a page that I've created it myself so this is what I'm going to be showing today and on this page you can see that the inking and the coloring is done in a different method a different style so I'm not using the same inks for the colors and there's a reason for that and it has a lot to do with the fact that remember the last episode when I mentioned that I was going to do something easy just you know quickly ink it and I'll and color it so that you know the episode could be online quickly well, I changed my mind, and that's also why this episode took so long to make. I decided to make two different versions of the same page so that you can see how it's different when you are inking without the intention of coloring afterwards versus when you are inking and then you know that there's going to be a colorist or yourself, you're going to color it. And uh, these two things were very different uh, and, you know, were quite important for me to show. And also, I get to show you some techniques and inking and some different methods, uh, which are, you know, uh, like cross hatching and stuff like that. So let's get started and let's dive straight into penciling. Okay, so penciling is the very first step, obviously, when creating a page. Now, your pencils are generally based off of your storyboards that you've created prior to this. Uh, now, for this particular page, I didn't have storyboards, so I'm technically storyboarding as I go. But um, on a normal comic book project, normally you would have storyboarded, as mentioned in the previous uh, episodes of my journey into making comics. If you haven't seen that, uh, you know, just go in the descriptions and you can, um, you know, there's a link to the playlist. Now, it is maybe useful to not, like, not make it too loose, your, your, your pencils. By that I mean, don't hesitate to get as many details in before you move on to inking, because if you can correct your mistakes during penciling, then that's already half of the job done. Okay, if you have to start making corrections in inking, you know, inking is all about getting clean lines. And, you know, when you have to do a lot of erasing and stuff, it kind of defeats that purpose. So it's, you know, it's some good advice. It's some advice that I don't follow myself too much. And you'll see that during this page. But because I am aware of it, I'm trying to pass that on to you guys. Right. So a few skills that you'd need in order to be good at penciling. Well, I would say have a good understanding of anatomy, uh, you know, the human anatomy, how the body works from different angles, uh, having a good understanding of perspectives and composition. So that's penciling. And uh, let's move on to the next stage, which is inking. So inking, inking for me is the longest, uh, you know, process within the uh, making of a comic book page. Okay, the reason for that is because inking really just takes a lot of time. So wherever you could just go sketchy on the pencils or not as detailed, well, for inking, really, it has to all make sense. All your lines, all your, you know, the lighting and all that stuff, which is another thing uh, that I forgot to mention during the penciling process, is that it really does help to have your pencils, I mean, your lighting, uh, already in mind while during uh, penciling. The reason for this is so that you don't have to figure out lighting uh, during inking. And this is something that you'll see me do during uh, this page. So I kind of am not following the advice that I'm giving you here for this page. Uh, but normally I do tend to do that for my work. And I, I'm only saying that because it really does help. Uh, the more you can figure out during penciling, the better. So. Inking a lot, takes a lot of time, so really don't rush it. You know, all inking for me is all about getting a clean result that really translates well. And again, like mentioned all the way at the beginning of this video, there is a difference in inking when you're going to not add any colors afterwards. So when the inking is the final product versus when you're going to do some inking 
for um, a colorist or you as you know that you're gonna add the colors afterwards there are a few things that you might want to keep in mind when doing this so always ink with the idea of like okay are there gonna be any colors added after this or not so here for this uh, particular page I did it in two steps I did one where I'm not going to use colors afterwards and one where I am and I wanted to do this because it shows that you really do have to think differently um, when you're not gonna add colors then you have to solve the lighting with your ink which provides you with much stronger contrasts okay and given that this is a page that is more for a younger audience colors tend to work better okay but I still wanted to show it because you can still have a very cool page uh, you know with a lot of ink and you know a lot of strong contrasts so and you'll often also see that uh, stories that you know or comics that are in black and white only they tend to have a more mature audience generally not always but generally um, because it's just you know for a younger audience colors works really well I mean my kids for example they easily liked the colored page much more than uh, the inked page some other people you know some more adults and stuff might be more into the the inks um, but yeah so that's something to keep in mind in terms of uh, art style and, and stuff like that now you have to think about how the inking will affect the rest of your page right so um, there are many different ways of inking. You can ink cross hatching uh, to get your shading done, or you can like do full black shading. Um, it just depends. It, it might end up being heavy, um, and also it's extremely important to distribute your 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 weight in ink a little bit. So, what I mean by that is. If you, for example, look at a page and there's too much black on one side of the page and not enough uh, in the opposite side, let's say, you will feel that there is an imbalance on the page. So you have to make sure that, um, you know, there is a proper balance. So there are some very good tutorials on this uh, online and I'll see if I can link them in the descriptions that explain very well how to distribute uh, your colors well not colors but your values basically to make sure that you don't have too much weight on your blacks or on your whites on on uh, different sections of the page so that's something that's interesting to know and this is something that I've been playing around here during this part of the um, the, the inking phase where you saw that that character in the middle was being added you know a lot of dark and I was I, I was playing with uh, with um, you know the balance of that contrast throughout the page. Here again, I'm doing it again to get uh, a bit of depth basically in the page to bring the character forward more, which is something that might not necessarily be uh, something that you do in coloring because in coloring there are other methods that we will cover later on that you can do in order to distinguish the background from the foreground. But here it kind of helps. Um, but again, when you do it like that, like I w what I was just doing right now, it also makes the art style a bit more mature. Now here with the red lines, what you saw on the page, that is me basically uh, verifying the lighting, where the lighting is coming from, uh, and you know to be applied later on uh, and see if, 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 if it works. So um, here's the thing about inking and at least this is how I learned about inking right what I do or what I do most of the time is I just look at other people that have done it before me professionals that are established in the industry and just check their art style look at their comics on Pinterest there are thousands of pages of established like inking legends that you know where you can really see how they solved particular lighting issues uh, how they um, like you know uh, what type of cross hatching they used and you know you just watch these things and learn from it now, some people can ink really well other people they have other strengths and you know you just have to find a little bit which art style works with you in terms of inking I'm still very much in search of my own uh, like I said I'm not a professional by any means I do make comics obviously as you've seen on this channel and you know I know a thing or two about comics and but I consider myself still very much uh, someone that's learning myself and exploring 
and to be honest with you, I don't think, I mean, if you want to be really good at comics or at anything in life for that matter, I think you're, you're, you never really tend to stop learning. At least I don't like to think that at some point I'm just going to be like, okay, well, you know, I know how to do this now. And for the rest of my life, I'm just going to repeat the same formula over and over and over again. I like to keep exploring. I like to keep looking and searching and learning from other artists. And this goes for so many different things. I mean, you have inking that you can learn, coloring. There's so many different things. So, um, I mean, an example is for, uh, you know, someone that I really admire in terms of inking, for example, Frank Miller. Okay, Frank Miller is someone that's a master in creating contrast just with black and white. If you haven't seen his work or you don't know who he is, just have a look, type it in, uh, in, in like in YouTube or uh, just in Google. He's amazing. He, you know, uh, to put it this way, he's done Sin City, he's done 300. Uh, you know, the, if you don't know the comics, maybe the movies, but really check him out. It's just uh, one of the many people that I admire for inking, but Frank Miller is really an example uh, for me. Then another few inkers that might be very interested to look into um, is, for example, Sean Martinbro. Uh, he wrote a book, How to Draw Noir Comics. I think it's a really good book that helps you understand uh, contrasts when you're just using black and white and it's perfectly possible to do it so I would really look into that if you're into inking if you really want to get better at that uh, one of my favorites uh, for inking as well and this is not what he specializes in he's more into doing storyboards and he's, he's basically a visual storyteller uh, that's Marcos Mateo Mestre he did a book framed ink, and I've already uh, spoken about this in uh, some of my previous episodes. So really, really nice to, to to just you know do some research on on them or other artists that you might really admire. Okay, that's the only way that I've really learned how to ink, or you know how I'm still learning how to ink. I pick up new ideas and new tactics from people like that all the time, and then I try to apply them on my own work. Sometimes I can apply it well, sometimes I don't. Oh, another thing, as you see how the uh, girl character, the female character keeps changing all the time, that's why it's interesting to have character designs done in advance. So you saw how her face was constantly changing uh, and that goes back to one of my previous episodes where I said, look, during pre-production, it's useful to do character design um, because, you know, then you don't have to be doing all of this and, you know, fixing faces during the actual page. Now, again, this is a demo page, but I wanted to show that, uh, like what happens when you don't, uh, prepare, uh, a face, uh, you know, before actually doing any pages, you know, this is what you end up getting. You end up getting a lot of, uh, fixing of the, you know, of the characters during the actual pages. And you'll see this here again, you know, I think I, I was, playing around with the face earlier on as well. Um, and there you go. Just for the record, these are my two children, or at least a cartoon version of my two children. Uh, you know, I have a daughter and a son, and they're really into, you know, all this fantasy stuff, and, and, you know, it's really fun to see them do it. So I decided to make a comic book page for them and, you know, feature it uh, here in my journey into making comics. And so there you have it. That's the inking done. Now, let's not forget that this is uh, only done when you are considering that this is finished as an inked page, not to add colors. That you're going to see in a second in the flatting stage where only the outlines are done. Okay, so flatting. Flatting is the easiest part of making comics. And this is where you can get one of your friends that has never created a comic and get him or her to help you do this if you hate flatting. Flatting can be done by anyone, really. All you have to do is just trace the artwork and create sections of colors that are gonna be filled in. Even the color, it doesn't even matter that the colors are not the right color. Like here, for example, you know, my son is completely in blue and my daughter was completely in pink. I just fixed it afterwards. It doesn't matter. Even during the coloring process, you're gonna get a lot of fixing done there anyways. So 
as long as your settings are right, then your flats will go well. Um, now I have a tutorial or a how-to video on my uh, channel on how to do flats in Procreate. If you want to learn a little bit more about flatting in Photoshop, there is a very good YouTube channel of, of K. Michael Russell, and I strongly recommend you have a look at it. But we'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later on in the coloring section. Now, flatting, again, here you can see me inking a bit because I, I forgot to add this in uh, a separate layer. Uh, but flatting is basically just, you know, it takes about two hours and a half, at least on this page. On other pages, it could be maybe an hour work, uh, 30 minutes in the absolute fastest. But it's this is actually how flats look once you remove the ink. It's just just the base colors only, which is very important for the next stage, which is the coloring stage. Okay, now coloring. Now there are many different ways of coloring a page and the approach that you'll choose will greatly affect the final result. So you'll have a very different outcome with one art style and the other. Now there's so much to learn about coloring that, you know, people underestimate coloring sometimes. They think like, you know, it's the easiest part, but it, it really isn't. Uh, I mean, at least in my opinion, I really have a tremendous respect for good colorists because I've learned that, you know, it's really not just, oh, let's just add some quick colors and some shading and some lighting. No, no, no. A good colorist can really make the page pop out, can really make a world of a difference. So what I've done for this particular page, I've done a cell shaded uh, style which is a little bit like what you see in the Japanese anime and manga and stuff like that. Um, it is uh, maybe an easier style, but still very effective in certain um, cases. Like in this one, I thought it was the best one. I could have also approached it through a painterly style or even a cut and grad, uh, which are different coloring methods. If you don't know them, again, I strongly recommend that you have a look at the coloring course of K. Michael Russell. Uh, I have all the descriptions below. I've also done a review on it on my channel. You can have a look. Anyway, so coloring really does make a difference. And with coloring, what you really need to learn is how light works and how shadows work. So for example, on the face here also, you see how they are getting a bit colder, uh, like a colder coat over them, at least for the characters that are in the front. And these are little tips and tricks in order to make your uh, character stand out and create a foreground, midground, and background. So there's a lot of little tips and tricks like that on coloring, which really, like I said, not to be underestimated. Here, here you can see it basically, it's on a different layer, all that blue, that was just uh, to separate the characters. So here's coloring done. Uh, it, you know, the video went a whole lot faster than it actually happened. I think I also spent a couple hours on this, but um, this is what I do before I, go moving forward to the last phase, which is the lettering phase. Okay, now lettering. Lettering is, oh, again, not to be underestimated. Now, the colors here on the screen will look a little bit different because this was recorded on a different screen. This is uh, from Clip Studio Paint. I did the letters um, and the balloons and all that stuff in Clip Studio Paint because it is an awesome piece of software for making comics in general, but uh, also to just do your text balloons. It's so much easier than Photoshop or anything else. Uh, I also have some, um, you know, a review on Clip Studio Paint on my channel. Again, every link that you need on this video is in the descriptions below. Uh, so have a look at that at the end of it. But what I wanted to mention here on um, lettering is that lettering, you know, there it's not just typing words or sentences and then a, a you know a, a word balloon and that's it. No, you know, some words, for example, uh, can have more weight than others. Some sentences in the story are very important. So knowing where to emphasize, and you can do this by different things, like for example, uh, increasing the uh, the the you know or changing a font or uh, increasing the size 
on particular parts of the uh, sentence like I I'm gonna do this here for uh, the story in a second or for this page I mean so lock and load for example has a bit more weight and I'm gonna emphasize that even more by making here they come even uh, a little bit smaller in uh, in the text and I'll do the same at the top so there are little tips and tricks here and lettering is all about that the positionment of your word balloons is extremely important and also your font choice obviously uh, and you know the way that you just approach the letters uh, the you know the the content there are many different ways to uh, you know express some words uh, into your um, you know into your work now also lettering is not just the word balloons but also the sound effects that you see me typing out here so sometimes that's done by the penciler or by the inker but in this case I added it to the lettering because it's part of lettering really and here's the lettering finished um, so this is like I said very important not to be underestimated and definitely to have a proper look at now you'll notice that I've made some modifications in the middle to create a bit more depth uh, that was done at the end with some adjustments now here you can see how the inking was done for finished inking and also for the intention of coloring afterwards you can see the difference here how it does make a massive effect when you apply colors to the other ink so I prefer to remove the colors from that one and keep just two versions one for inking and one with colors and so there you have it then. So that was the production phase. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. And what we're going to be looking at next week is the distribution phase. And also it covers a bit of marketing, which is the very last thing that you tend to do when making comics. But not to forget, it's actually one of the first things that you should be thinking about. So we come full circle. Uh, so that's what we're going to be reviewing in the next episode. In the meantime, if you like this type of content, why don't you leave a like and subscribe. And then we'll see each other in the next one.